Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. AMD has just finished their long-awaited Big Navi presentation where they announced the Radeon RX 6000 series. AMD were kind enough to provide us with most of the information ahead of time so we can give our thoughts on what has just been shown off here, analyze the presentation, and of course, just give you guys the raw information. So if you missed the event or just want a quick recap, AMD today have announced three Big Navi GPUs. The Radeon RX 6800, the Radeon RX 6800 XT, and the big boy Radeon RX 6900 XT. These are designed to compete with Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090 respectively. Yep, that's right. The top end card is, according to AMD, a true challenger for the flagship GPU market, and we will show some of AMD's performance figures a bit later. For specifications, the RX 6900 XT is the highest card in the lineup. It features 80 compute units, a 2015 megahertz game clock, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a total board power rating of 300 watts. You'll also see a boost clock figure, although as a reminder, AMD expects most people to be close to the game clock while gaming, so it should be a better representation of actual clocks. There's also a new Infinity Cache spec, which I'll talk about in more detail soon. The RX 6800 XT, packs 72 compute units and the same 2015 megahertz game clock as the 6900 XT. It also features the same memory system, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and 300 watts of board power. We're not sure whether the 6900 XT is a fully unlocked die with 80 compute units, while the 6800 XT is a cut down version of that card, as AMD isn't talking about dies just yet. However, if I had to guess, the ADCU model is probably fully unlocked, while the 6800 XT is probably cut down. Then there's also the RX 6800, the non-XT model, which packs 60 compute units, a game clock of 1815 MHz, but still a huge 16GB of memory. Total board power for this GPU is 250 watts. For release dates, the 6800 and 6800 XT will go on sale on November 18, while the 6900 XT will hit on December 8th, and I'll talk a bit more about pricing later on. All three of these GPUs use AMD's new RDNA2 architecture, so let's talk a little about what AMD is promising with this upgrade. The key points here are a significant performance boost over the RX 5700 XT, AMD claiming a 2x improvement. However, this isn't just coming from an increase to the amount of compute units. AMD have also been able to significantly increase clock speeds, despite this new 6000 series using the same TSMC 7 nanometer node. So, yeah, that's right, we're not seeing 7 nanometer plus or 7 nanometer enhanced. This is the same 7 nanometer node as previous RDNA series. Obviously, you can't just go shoving in a ton more compute units at higher clocks on the same process node and expect to fit that within the same power envelope. So AMD has managed to significantly increase performance per watt with RDNA 2. We don't have full architectural details yet, but AMD claim a total performance per watt improvement for this architecture of 54%, comparing 6800 XT to 5700 XT, and that performance per watt figure increases to 65% when comparing the 6900 XT to the 5700 XT, which is definitely very impressive. With that said, power limits have increased as well. The 5700 XT was only a 225 watt card, while AMD's new flagship parts are 300 watts. That's a 33% increase in board power to go with up to 65% more performance per watt, allowing AMD to really compete at the high end. Given the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 are 320 watt and 350 watt cards respectively, it's possible that AMD will be overall leaders in performance per watt too, although that of course will take further benchmarking. How are AMD achieving this performance per watt gain? One part is an increase to the efficiency of the compute units. AMD are claiming 30% more efficiency here through things like adjustments to data paths and pipelines, as well as fine grain clock gating. The next part is through the Infinity Cache, which again we don't have a lot of details on as AMD didn't do a deep dive on architecture today. However, this appears to be a significant on-die cache, which gives much higher bandwidth at respectable power levels than say accessing GDDR6 memory. It appears AMD are keeping the 256-bit bus of first-gen RDNA here for these parts, but the Infinity Cache delivers higher performance, with AMD telling us they borrowed some ideas from the Zen team for this cache system. All three RDNA2 GPUs announced today have 128 megabytes of Infinity Cache, and it sounds like this will be a significant factor for performance moving forward, which is why it's now seen on the spec sheet. However, this chart on frequency did confuse me a little bit. AMD is saying that at the same power, they've been able to achieve a 30% frequency increase. 
In practice, we're not getting 30% higher clock speeds with these parts. The 6900 XT is clocked around 15% higher than the 5700 XT comparing game clocks, with the new RDNA 2 part also having double the compute unit count at a higher board power level. So I guess it's possible that at the same power and compute unit count, RDNA 2 can clock 30% higher, but we're not seeing that exact thing materialize in products yet, not until we get lower tier products. This is one component of the efficiency equation, but again, we aren't getting a 30% higher frequency in shipping parts. RDNA 2 is the first architecture from AMD to support DirectX 12 Ultimate, so we are getting support for DirectX ray tracing, variable rate shading, mesh shaders, and sampler feedback. However, in what is personally a huge disappointment, AMD did not spend any of today's announcement talking about ray tracing performance, so we are completely in the dark as to how the RX 6000 series will fare for ray tracing. Now this actually concerns me somewhat, as usually when a company has a cool feature to show off, they would show it. If the 6900 XT, for example, was faster than an RTX 3080 or 3090 for ray tracing, I'd expect AMD would be shouting those numbers from rooftops. That they aren't yet willing to talk about ray tracing performance yet, even when directly asked during our briefing, suggests to me that RDNA 2 is perhaps not as good at ray tracing as NVIDIA's GPUs, but that's just speculation though, and we'll find out more when it's time for reviews. The one advantage AMD may have on their side though is their architecture, which should be quite similar to what is shipping in the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5. Developers should become quite accustomed to how ray tracing works with RDNA 2, and AMD did talk to us about how easy they are making work on both consoles and RDNA 2 PC GPUs this generation. Of course, this won't close a huge performance deficit straight away, but who knows what it could do over time. As for other features, AMD are introducing something called AMD Smart Access Memory. This is a feature that when you pair an RX 6000 series GPU with a Ryzen 5000 series desktop CPU, the CPU will then have full access to GPU memory. Again, don't have a ton of information on this at this stage, and I do know that it will be at least at launch restricted just to Ryzen 5000 CPUs, but it's something that should increase the total memory pool available when these components are paired, as games won't necessarily have to duplicate assets in both system and GPU memory. AMD are also offering something called Rage Mode, which is a standard looking one click overclocking mode available in Radeon software. When combined with Smart Access Memory on a Zen 3 platform, AMD are claiming a 2 to 13% performance boost in the games they tested. So, based on this, I'd say these GPUs have fairly limited overclocking headroom, but we'll see. One final thing on features before we look at AMD's performance figures, AMD showed this slide talking about fidelity effects and some of the things they are offering to developers. One of them is a super resolution mode, and when I asked AMD if this was designed to be a competitor to DLSS, they told me it's designed to do upscaling like DLSS, but works in a fundamentally different way. It's also still in the development phase, so we can expect to learn more about that over time. However, AMD did say that they hope their approach will be more broadly applicable to games than NVIDIA's DLSS. So no direct DLSS competitor has been announced today, but it sounds like AMD are aware of it and are working on their own thing. Let's now talk about AMD's performance figures, which should be taken with a grain of salt as they are from the manufacturer and will of course be cherry picked in some way to show their product in the best light, but still people will be interested in it, so let's get into it. The first one here is for the RX 6800 at 4K compared to the RTX 2080 Ti. Obviously AMD couldn't test the 6800 versus Nvidia's RTX 3070 for this chart, with AMD half joking that this was done on purpose. Anyway, the RX 6800 on a Zen 3 platform, in this case a Ryzen 9 5900X, the RX 6800 is the faster GPU according to AMD. In some games the difference is negligible, like in Wolfenstein Youngblood, however in others, like say Borderlands 3 or Battlefield 5, AMD expect the 6800 to be over 20% faster. AMD also expect this delta to increase at 1440p. They say the RDNA 2 architecture scales particularly well at 1440p, partly down to the Infinity Cache, which is designed for 4K gaming. When you start gaming at 1440p, hit rates in the cache supposedly improve, which delivers even higher performance. So in AMD's numbers for a game like The Division 2, previously where the 6800 only matched the 2080 Ti at 4K, the 6800 is now ahead at 1440p. So that bodes very well for those with with 1440p displays, with 1440p being a far more popular resolution for today's gaming. And of course, we now know the RTX 3070 performs very similarly to the RTX 2080 Ti, so the RX 6800 should come in faster based on what AMD is saying. 
Next up, we have the RX 6800 XT. This is a close battle between it and the RTX 3080 in AMD's numbers, of course without ray tracing as we don't have that data yet. AMD is showing 10 games here, and they are faster or even in 6 of them at 4K. Again it looks about even overall, but we'll have to see where everything lies in our benchmarks. Curiously, the numbers shown here are actually higher for the 6800 XT than what AMD showed in their Zen 3 announcement with an unspecified RDNA 2 GPU, although of course we don't know if both benchmark methods were the same. At 1440p, again AMD are expecting the RX 6800 XT to perform better when compared to the RTX 3080, now winning in 8 of the titles shown. Tested using a 5900X like the 6800, AMD are also showing about 10-20% to faster results for the RX 6800 XT versus the RX 6800. They're right at the top of the stack. AMD are confident in comparing the RX 6900 XT to the RTX 3090, with a similar story to the RX 6800 XT versus RTX 3080, where they are leading in 6 of the 10 games shown. However, it should be noted that AMD are relying on the benefits of both Rage Mode and Smart Access Memory for these results, so this is basically an overclocked 6900 XT up against the 3090. Stock numbers may be different, it does look like the 6900 XT will be about 5-10% to faster than the 6800 XT, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise as it only has 11% more compute units at the same frequency. And while AMD didn't compare the 6900 XT to the RTX 3080, that comparison should come out favourably for AMD based on their numbers. We're looking across all these numbers, there's definitely elements that look quite promising and others that of course will need further exploration in our reviews. Based on what AMD is showing here and accounting for a bit of the say cherry picking tax, I would expect a GPU like the RX 6800 XT to come in a bit slower than the RTX 3080 on average at 4K, but potentially faster or equal at 1440p. I'd expect the RX 6900 XT to fall between the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090, while the RX 6800 should outperform the RTX 3070 by a decent margin. Even if AMD doesn't get the performance win in all situations, the big news here is that AMD are back to compete in the high-end market segment. This shouldn't be a situation where, like some garbage rumours were suggesting, AMD are only able to compete with the RTX 3070 in the $500 class. AMD are confident their products will hold up against Nvidia's high-end lineup including the RTX 3090, which is better than I expected given the struggles of the Radeon division over the years. I actually wasn't expecting to see any comparisons between Big Navi and the RTX 3090, but we got them and AMD even showed their GPU winning on occasion. Whether or not it's the overall faster GPU remains to be seen, but AMD should be right up there. As for pricing, Let's talk about that because I only received this information at the last minute. The RX 6800 XT, AMD's RTX 3080 competitor, will be priced at $649 US dollars and available on November 18th. On the same day, you'll be able to get the RX 6800 for $579 US dollars with performance between the 3070 and 3080. Then on December 8th, the RX 6900 XT will launch for $1,000 US dollars. On availability, we asked AMD what the situation would be and they said they are well aware of the high demand for GPUs right now and are hoping to satisfy customers on launch day but didn't really elaborate beyond that. This really could go either way but at least there are exactly 3 weeks to launch for AMD to get this right. The RX 6800 XT to me looks to be decently priced for what AMD are claiming to offer. Again, we don't know about ray tracing performance yet, but based on AMD's performance numbers, if this card comes in around the performance of an RTX 3080 or even slightly below, it should be respectable value at $50 less. It could also be a situation where the value proposition is better at 1440p than 4K, given the scaling figures we've seen so far. But at 7% cheaper than an RTX 3080, there is some performance leeway there for value, and who knows, it might even be the more available card given Nvidia's struggles with 3080 supply. The RX 6800 looks to be even better value in my opinion. At $580 it's around 16% more expensive than the RTX 3070, but AMD has performance in the range of 20-30% to better in some titles according to their numbers, especially at 1440p. Not only that, it sits in a really nice position in the market occupying that space between the 3070 and 3080 from both a price and performance perspective. Until Nvidia has something like a 3070 Ti for that gap, buyers with around $600 to spend should now have a good option. 
There's also the situation of VRAM. The RTX 3070 is just an 8GB card, but AMD is offering 16GB for both the 6800 and 6800 XT. Given that 8 or even 10GB of VRAM is right on the edge for today's gaming at 4K, AMD could have an advantage with 16GB over time, and we've seen that in the past with AMD's higher capacity offerings relative to NVIDIA around the same price. So the 6800 should end up being both faster and a higher VRAM card than the 3070 for only a modest price increase. Full reviews will give us the entire picture, but that at the very least looks like a promising and competitive product. The gap between the RX 6800 series products also seems reasonable. The 6800 XT is probably going to be around 10-20% to faster based on AMD's numbers and costs 12% more. So in this market, AMD don't appear to be inflating the higher tier card's price. The RX 6900 XT being a Halo product doesn't look like particularly great value, but flagship products, I guess, never are. The RTX 3090 is itself a ridiculous GPU at an insane price, and the 6900 XT's AMD's I don't know what you'd say, more modest equivalent to that. At $1,000, it would need to consistently beat the RTX 3080 to be worth its asking price. And if it can do that, it might be okay up against the $1,500 RTX 3090. But realistically, this isn't gonna be a mass market appeal product, given it's over 50% more expensive than the 6800 XT, yet likely will only be five to 10% faster. The key thing really though for me is that AMD are genuinely looking to and expecting to compete with high-end NVIDIA cards for the first time since the, say, R9 290X back in 2013. Since that release, AMD's high-end GPUs have stagnated badly through the Fury and Vega eras to the point where first-gen Navi was only a mid-range contender. I mean, up until this release, AMD struggled to surpass the performance on offer from NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. So to now be able to not just beat that product, but smash well past it to compete with NVIDIA's recently released flagship is extremely impressive. With that said, there are still lots of question marks over this release, and given Radeon's track record, they'll have to prove themselves on the benchmark table. We don't know how these GPUs perform in a wider range of games. We don't know what stock 6900 XT performance looks like. We have no indication of ray tracing performance. We aren't sure about how AMD will compete on features. We don't know what the driver situation will be like or how strong availability will be. Hopefully we can provide answers to all of these in our final review. It's also quite clear that AMD are purely focusing on the high end for now, with the 6800 series cards and above. You would expect AMD to fill out the rest of their product stack over time with things like a 6700 XT at or below $500, so lots to play out here with Nvidia also gearing up for more launches throughout the stack, so a very exciting time for GPU buyers. I think that'll just just about do us for this coverage of the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series announcement. As I said, still lots of things to uncover about this launch. I don't think we got quite as much information today as we did with, say, the Zen 3 announcement a couple of weeks ago. So reviews, we'll have to uncover a lot of that stuff and give you guys the details on ray tracing, whether features like direct storage and all that sort of thing are included here. So yeah. We'll be keen to share more information when we can. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing those reviews, the best way to do that is, of course, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, do all that wonderful stuff. You can also support our testing directly on Patreon if you're interested. You'll get access to things like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind-the-scenes videos, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.